welcome. This, this webinar is about local food sources in Cochise County. And this is from the Eat Local Project, um, which is uh, sponsored by the Cochise County Library District. Um, welcome, everyone. Just a couple Zoom housekeeping issues before we get started. Um, we are in a webinar format, so everyone except the panelists, um, your cameras are off and your microphones are muted. Um, if you have questions for the panelists, please put them in the Q&A down at the bottom, um, or feel free to use the chat as well. Um, at the end, um, we may open it up if people want to um, ask questions out loud if we have time at the end. And I see several people that, that I know in here and a couple of our um, local producers. So that is exciting. Um, Trudy, especially I see in here, it's nice to see you. Um, Trudy runs a farm and also the Palomino's Farmer's Market. So um, feel free to plug your market and we're gonna, we're gonna talk more about that in just a minute. So it's great to see you. If there are other um, farmers, ranchers or people who are um, producer producing or selling local food who are on with us feel free to plug what you're doing in the in the chat um, I'm going to go ahead and well I'll leave the poll up for another minute um, just as a quick overview of the eat local project um, we have a number of different things going on we have a whole slate of webinars we have a website which includes a directory of local food producers and local markets which we're going to go through today um, we have a big read coming up in June we just finished one um, lots of social media some events and different things as well as a school kit so if you're interested in more about any of that our website is eatlocalcoaches.org um, and you could also um, let us know if you're not on our mailing list and you'd like to be. Um, so I just want to get started with some introductions. Um, my name is Karen Fassenpower. I am the project manager for the Eat Local project. Um, also with us today, we have Elizabeth Tyndall from University of Arizona Cooperative Extension. Happy to have her with us. We have Winnie Struess, who is the manager of the Sierra Vista Farmers Market, and we're going to be talking um, a lot about that today. And we also have Robin Dumas, who runs the Healthy Food Forum from CoNest. And Robin's having, we're going to check and see if her technical issues are resolved, um, but she is with us as well. So. Um, with that, I think um, I'm going to just end the poll and share the results of that. And then we will um, let Elizabeth start us off by talking about some of the farmers markets. So here are the results from the poll. Um, almost half of you are going to our farmers markets weekly, which is fabulous and then a variety of other things. Um, we're going to talk about some things other than the farmers markets today, other um, retail and farms where you can get things and CSAs and a lot of different things. So again, thank you all for being here. And I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth to walk us through uh, the different farmers markets around the county. Hi, everybody. Welcome and thanks for joining us here tonight. Um, so um, there are three um, farmers markets in the county. Uh, there's the Sierra Vista Farmers Market, um, and that is every Thursday, um, 10 to 2 in Veterans Park. Um, they've moved closer to the stage, if you're familiar where it was before. Um, and of course, that's on Fry Boulevard. Um, Bisbee Farmers Market is on Saturdays, um, and that has recently moved to Naco Highway at La Ramada. Um, and then there is the Palominas Farmers Market, and um, that is every Saturday. Um, currently, I think that is from 10 to 2, um, and that is right on Highway 92, um, kind of across from where the Copper Queen Clinic is. So it's really um, easy to get to. Uh, so fantastic. And then we do have other seasonal sellers um, that are out throughout the county. Um, so in Tombstone, um, there is sometimes a farmer's market. Um, there's a couple of other markets. There's the Elfrida farmer's market in the park. Um, Benson has um, a market, I believe that is located at the hospital. 
um, the Sunsides Boardwalk Market um, portal, and then of course there's more. And so a lot of these are very seasonal. Um, they depend on um, a few sellers. So if you are interested in going to any of these markets, um, we recommend that you check out the website on the slide um, or contact some, you know, someone who is in charge of that market um, or perhaps the city to see if it is happening that weekend. Um, oh, perfect. And I see in the chat that the Palominas market is a mile west of Palominas Road now. Um, and starting in May, they will start summer hours from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So that's perfect. Starts a little bit earlier in the morning, get the little bit cooler hours. Um, I want to just um, jump in really quick. And there's a question um, in the Q&A about what happened to the farmer's market in Tombstone. Um, and I don't, I don't know these seasonal, these, I'm not sure if the Tombstone market is still happening. I know it was, um, put off for COVID. And I don't know if it started again. I see somebody has their hand raised. If you can put in the chat, if you know something about um, the, Pel uh, the Tombstone market. Um, I know that the third and survey market is going on currently. Elfrida right now is not happening, but they're waiting to get started. Um, Portal is happening right now, but it's pretty small. So these seasonal markets are, they're seasonal, but they're also, um, sort of, you know, it, they have a variety of things and there may or may not be produce depending on the season. So that's sort of why we categorize them separately. Go ahead, go ahead, Elizabeth. No, no that's excellent. And I think um, that's a really good point um, to kind of mention um, seasonality really impacts our markets. So, um, while you know big growers may be able to grow things like inside or greenhouse or even hydroponically, um, you know local smaller growers are, are very much tied to what grows during the season, and we're just coming into the growing season here in Cochise County. Um, so some of the you'll find fresh greens and um, some root vegetables still, but not as much. Um, of the like tomatoes and peppers quite yet. Um, <clears throat> and so some of these markets may also have non-local produce. Um, so you know, there is mark, there's produce that comes from all over, um, some um, that comes from even Nogales from across the border. Um, and for our purposes here, um, that's not a, a part of the local, um, definition. Um, of course, it, that varies depending on <laughs> who, which group, but for, for Cochise County local, um, that doesn't, that doesn't can count as local. And it's not that the non-local produce is not as bad or anything's wrong with it. <laughs> it's just, it's worth um, distinguishing because some people, to some people, local is really important and it obviously has different, you know, economic benefits. Um, and I would just say, if you're not sure, ask. Um, I know I always, I, I often feel shy about asking, but people don't mind talking about it. And I would point out on this on this prior slide, um, most of our farmers markets have some designation of which growers are actually in the county. So that's sort of a way that the market um, helps out with that. Um, but that's not always available. So it's definitely okay to ask. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the benefits um, to shopping at farmers markets is you get to have a conversation with the grower, the seller, um, and you not only ask like where it was grown or how it was grown, um, but like the best thing to do with it. Um, because sometimes you get to find things that are unique and they would not find in a grocery store. Um, and so it's, it's always good to have a conversation with your, with your producer. All right, so um, my job is primarily working um, with SNAP, and that is the education arm um, of what most people know as food stamps. Um, and we'll go to the next slide. Currently, there are two programs that are from farmers markets um, that benefit both um, people and farmers. Um, so right now, 
is <clears throat> what is known as FMNP, and it's Farmer's Market Nutrition Program. Um, and this is from happening now and it goes until October. And if you are a WIC recipient or a senior nutrition recipient, you are eligible um, for $30 in benefits to buy Arizona grown produce. Um, and so the Arizona grown is an important um, part of that. Um, so definitely Cochise County produce uh, is counts and we get to support our, our local farmers with that. So um, Winnie will talk about how that operates a little bit more, but um, you bring your items to the farmer's market and um, you get a coupon book and you'll be able to use that at vendors that have, um, most of the time they'll have a poster up and it is important um, to note here, um, Sierra Vista Farmer's Market is currently the only market in Cochise County that does take um, the SMAP and WIC benefits. Um, so over here in the corner on the slide, um, we have our double up bucks. And if you'll go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about double up bucks. So, when you redeem SNAP benefits at the market, um, you can look for um, posters like these that are shown here. And the SNAP benefits can be used at the farmer's market just like you would at the grocery store. Um, and they're perfect for buying all types of Cochise County products. Um, and then for every SNAP dollar you redeem, you can get the double up buck, which is the silver coin in the picture. And those you can use for Arizona grown fruits and vegetables. So um, one of the things I do wanna talk about is that you can also use your SNAP benefits for plants. So um, if the farmer's market, they have plants for sale, especially this time of year, um, you can use your SNAP benefits for that. But I do have a couple of demonstrations that I brought with me today. I love to demonstrate. So um, locally made items that you can get with your SNAP benefits at the market. I'm gonna have to turn my blur, whoops. I'm gonna turn my blur off here so that everyone can see. There we go. So um, these are locally made tortillas. Um, and you can get these, um, these are just plain flour, but you can get them in mesquite, um, spinach, um, tomato, um, corn. So those are one of the locally grown items you can get with SNAP benefits. Um, honey um, is another item that is available at the market, locally made right here in Cochise County. Um, really, really tasty. Um, my daughter's been using this on her biscuits all week. <laughs> um, then eggs are also another item that you can use your SNAP benefits on and that you can find at a lot of vendors at the farmer's market. Um, and then the next items I have are things you can use SNAP benefits, double up bucks, or FMNP. Um, I have some basil, which even in the Ziploc bag smells fantastic. Um, so fresh herbs are um, almost always available at the farmer's market, especially once the growing season kicks in. Um, then I picked these up last week. Um, these are radishes. Um, so you can get some different radishes. And there's one seller that sells some really cool turnips. They look almost just like this but you can eat them just like a radish. You can eat them raw or you can cook them and saute them. They're so good. Um, and then um, the last thing, um, probably if you went to the farmer's market last week or next week or this week, tomorrow, um, <laughs> what you might find a lot of right now are fresh greens. Um, so this is some spinach. Um, actually, I believe that this is from Backyard Gardening. Um, and you can um, use your SNAP benefits, double up bucks, or FM&P 
um, fresh greens. So spinach, Swiss chard, lettuce, um, you name it, um, you can definitely get it there. Um, so I have all of that. And then one of the things that we get to do um, for my job that is super duper fun is I get to go shop the market and then bring things home and make a food demo of them. So I'm gonna drop in the chat box a link to our YouTube channel. Um, so if you bought spinach and you're like, what do I do with spinach? Um, you can check it out there. And uh, most of my things are kid friendly um, because I focus on kids. Um, and kids in farmer's markets are super fun. Um, there's a, it's a really good way to get kids to try new things um, and try different things. So I highly recommend bringing your kids to any of the markets um, so that they can see and talk to um, the different farmers and learn more about where their food comes from. So, that is great, Elizabeth. And the library district also has a couple really good books with activities for kids at the farmer's market. So if people are interested in bringing kids or if there's any teachers who want to tie in some activities, um, that would be Great. Um, I think before we go to the next section, um, let's turn it over to Winnie to talk about just anything, any highlights of the Sierra Vista market, and then we'll have Trudy talk about the Palominos market. All right. Awesome. Um, thank you. Welcome, everybody. I'm Winnie from the Sierra Vista Farmers Market, and we actually have a, an event coming up tomorrow. We have Earth Day celebration, which um, is an expanded market. So we are hoping to have Lisa out with the alpacas from the Thunder Mountain Alpaca Ranch. Uh, the city of Sierra Vista is gonna bring, the animal shelter is gonna bring an adoption van where you can see some animals and maybe um, you know adopt a kitty or a puppy or something. Um, on, then I also have the uh, um, Oasis water harvesting. Uh, Rick Weisberg usually brings out the big tanks just to show you how big they can be. And he'll be on hand to answer any questions. A um, couple other ones that are coming is Borderlands Restoration Network. They are handing out um, plants and seeds that are you know, for this area. And they always uh, collaborate with the Pollinator Corridor Southwest um, for the same purpose. Um, also, Sierra Vista Community Garden will be out and they are going to do a demonstration on, oh. hey Robin, <laughs> oh, there she went again, uh, Sierra Vista Community Garden is going to do a demonstration on how to make seed pots out of newspapers so you can start your seedlings in homemade pots. Uh, then you will have um, most of our regular vendors. So there will be meat, there will be milk, um, eggs. Uh, there is produce at the market tomorrow. But like uh, Rob, uh, Elizabeth was saying, uh, we are in between seasons. So that's, it's a lot of greens. It's a lot of root vegetables. It uh, has to warm up a little bit more for us to have the summer vegetables like tomatoes, peppers, beans. But I know that a lot of producers are working really hard on getting that ready. But uh, we have Ruth's um, garden will be out with uh, her whole trailer of tomato plants, strawberry plants, fig trees, and she's running a special because it's Earth Day tomorrow. Um, I don't know if you wanted me to talk a little bit more about the SNAP. Uh, I was gonna just tell you how uh, people can redeem them. Um, it's rather easy. Uh, you come to the uh, information booth and you bring your EBT card and you tell us how much you would like to redeem. We take that off, off your card with the machine and then we double it up with the uh, double up bucks, the metal coins, which are only for Arizona grown produce. Um, it's a little bit low in produce right now, but um, they don't expire. So you can hang on to them till we have you know, all this fruit coming in uh, by the end of June. We should have uh, apricots coming on, plums, and July brings peaches, August has apples and figs. Uh, uh, the list is really unending there once, once the summer starts. 
The WIC um, coupons are also easily redeemed. All you need to bring is your phone that has your eWIC information on it and your eWIC card. The card, we just take some numbers off and then get some information from you. And then it's rather easy. We hand you the coupon book, which comes in $5 increments. And it is good until um, October, almost the middle of November. Uh, as I understand it, um, they increased the amount for seniors this year to $50. So there's a little bit more money for the seniors this year. Um, they say they um, send out a text. If you text that number that uh, Elizabeth had on earlier, and they will send you a reminder every month um, to come and you know get your booklet. And then again, it's it's good until the fall, and you can get produce, lots of produce for that. Um, I don't know if anybody has questions. That's my little overview. That's great. Thank you so much, Winnie. And Winnie also grows. She has, when um, Elizabeth mentioned the backyard gardening, that's Winnie's. And I had some fabulous turnips from her two weeks ago. So um, I'm going to, and we'll come back for more questions if people have questions about um, Double Up or Snap or any of that. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Trudy just to give a brief um, overview and any highlights she wants to share about the Palominos market. And Trudy, you'll need to unmute to do that. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm working on dinner, so. You're good. You're good. You're <laughs> good. <laughs> so um, our market, we just celebrated our one year anniversary and it was, um, it's pretty great. We've, we've done a lot of growing this last year where we started in our backyard with just a handful of vendors. We have grown quite a bit and to like our max has been around 30 vendors. We don't usually have that many every week, but we have um, people come and go depending on vacations and, and whatnot. So there's always somebody new every week, it seems like. We don't have a lot of produce vendors, uh, mostly because when we started last year, all of the major produce growers were already committed to Servista and Bisbee markets. And so they're sticking with where they, where they go. <laughs> totally understandable. So we, um, we've been encouraging everyone to grow something this year, even if it's just an extra cucumber plant or something. And it's like, even if you're like, maybe you're a soap maker, but you can have a basket of whatever you grow on your table. And then that would provide more produce for everyone. And so we haven't seen a whole lot yet because like you said, it's just not the right season for most things, but we're getting there. And um, in the meantime, we do, we, bring, we do bring in food from the food bank in Nogales, which is not local, but at least gives some, some food to the local people that are in need. They can come get that for free. Um, so we have, gosh, we have <laughs> a lot of different things. We have a lot of lovely young ladies making soap and other body care products. We do uh, have crafters of all sorts. We have herbalists, um, egg producers, bakers, milk, meat. We have a good assortment, just um, the produce is what's lacking at this point. Um, and we've decided to do the hour switching uh, because in the winter, everybody was too cold to be there at nine. And <laughs> in the summer, nobody wants to be there till two. So it's, it gets a little confusing sometimes, but uh, we tr update the website. Well, the Facebook page and whatnot. And we do have a few signs out on different roads and we'll be changing those to reflect the new, the time difference. And um, I don't know what else, is, what else to say. <laughs> I think that's great. Um, thank you so much. I'm glad that you could be here with us. And we're just really happy to, in Cochise County, it, it's a 
for for a not super populated county, we are really happy to have three strong markets that mm -hmm. are there every week, and then a number of other markets that are seasonal or in and out. So happy you could join us. Oh, thank you. And hope some of you can visit um, any or all three of our markets. And as we talk more about um, other sellers, it's definitely, um, you know, produce is, it's, it's more seasonal. And in Cochise County, we are, we have very strong vendors for meat and dairy. Um, and we'll highlight some of those as well. So that's not just the Palominos market, but it's just somewhat a characteristic of our of our county right now. Um, but we will come back at the end and also talk about some produce sellers who are not selling at the market and talk about um, at the various markets and talk a little bit about where they're selling. So I'm going to um, go back now and share my screen and then I'm going to turn it over to Robin to talk about our other retail markets, which other places, other than just the farmer's markets we've talked about, where you can buy local products. Are you, you go ahead, Robin. All right, Karen, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right, great. Man, uh, technology almost won today, but uh, I managed to uh, still get here, so I do apologize for that. Um, I'm Robin real quick from the Healthy Food Forum and CONAS. And I've lived here for 10 years. And one of my favorite things to do is wander around, eat local, support local. And as I have begun to really hone in on local grown food and produce and um, understand where my food comes from, I have been able to really uh, figure out where things are being sold, retail markets, and um, where we can expand. So here we have a few of the other retail markets. One's a Sierra Vista Co-op, and that's actually open seven days a week from 8 to 8, and Wednesday mornings from 7 to 8 a.m. For seniors and vulnerable customers, they have that uh, special time to shop. Um, here is where you can definitely buy the local milk by our Golden Rule Dairy, eggs and meat from Sky Island Ranch, and when possible, local grown produce and veggies. So there's definitely um, always a market. Um, and Bisbee, which is one of my favorite places to eat, has the High Desert Market. And they have also the local milk from Golden Rule eggs and that meat from Sky Island brand. And they are open from 9 a.m. to 6, six days a week and closed on Wednesday. And then there's also Apple Annie's, which is seasonally in Wilcox. And I'm sure tons of people have heard of this. I know my kids have um, visited there and I myself have picked out some uh, pumpkins from the pumpkin patch. And there are three locations, um, two of which are the ones that have the produce and they are open seasonally. Um, let's see. I know that also they have the pies and their apple bread and their butter, but the amount of produce that is available to be picked at Apple Annie's, the variety is huge. Definitely season by season. And it's not only if you don't want to pick, they also have the market there where you can just go in and shop and it's just ready to go for you. So it is either or. And I'm going to jump in before we go to our next slide and just mention a new vendor. And I'm not sure if Bobby is on here with us, but um, Vista Microgreens is a is a brand new vendor, um, and they are selling uh, microgreens at the Sierra Vista Co-op. Um, they are also going to be doing 
delivery. I think it's not quite started yet. Um, if somebody from there is on, go ahead and put it in the chat. But they just started in the last week or so. And I know somebody asked about what are some options for um, homebound or people who can't get out to the markets. So that would be one as well. And I'll turn it back over to Robin. And if you're ready for the next slide. Yes. And thanks, Karen, for making sure we, we hit another one here. We are always gathering more and more information and adding to these. All right. Yes, I look. I just look at the picture of Stuart's uh, ribs and I realize that tomorrow is Thursday and it's Earth Day at the Farmer's Market in Sierra Vista. And um, I'm actually going to, to snag my kids for lunch and bring them in to come see everything and look at all the demos that are going to be there. Um, there's definitely lots of exciting things going on. There's a microgreens kit, right, Karen? Um, a windowsill microgreens kit that can be picked up from the county library system. And I am not sure if the BASA, right? BASA will be there with their- Yes. With their, yes, with their mesquite. Oh man, with the warm cookies. So sorry, I could- <laughs> ah, So the eateries, um, is an also growing list of those that produce um, or, or source from local farms for their produce, for their veggies. And um, as the discussion grows, it's definitely growing. I know that when tourists or are coming, they're excited to take part in something that, that helps um, give back to the local environment and make sure that even as they travel, that they're not coming and, and destroying it. So they know that, um, that, local produce and, and eating local and where they, the restaurants they go to are, are part of that. So uh, this is a pretty important, exciting list for me. Um, and there's the quarry in Bisbee, um, which Dana House, who's um, what the owner, is focuses on farm to table, non-GMO, local fresh and seasonal fare, brunch, bites, entrees, um, Sky Island beef is also there. Local eggs, honey, and produce as available. Uh, and they have varying hours throughout the week. Open Monday, Thursday, Friday, 5 to 10 or later, Saturday, 10 to 2, and Sunday, 10 to 7. And, um, and then there's, if you travel a little bit, and in Sierra Vista, where I happen to be, one of my favorite places um, is Indochine. And Tony Pham is the owner and chef there, and he grows his own lemongrass, onions, greens, and other produce included in his awesome, amazing fusion dishes. Um, and he is always, always into the community and into gardening and loves, uh, you can definitely tell in his food. And then there's also Stuart there from the Lazy KJ Ranch, and he is a mobile food uh, barbecue truck. And his uh, amazing pork products are local grass fed. And I know, like I said, he's at our service to farmers market, and he's also in Old Bisbee Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings. Um, I am really excited for that. And uh, the wineries, uh, our region of wineries is large and vibrant. Um, there's definitely a list on the website at the eLocal Cochise website. Um, and Charlene should be able to post that in the chat. Um, I personally look forward to connecting with this part of our food system in the immediate future when it comes to this growing list of eateries. Um, and it's so vibrant, extensive. So I am looking forward to more of the discussions where we can talk about that. Great, and thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead, are you two more? No, I'm good. Okay, thanks Robin. Um, so Robin mentioned the website and I just wanna say that um, we are constantly building and updating our lists. When we started this project, one of the things that um, people in the county asked us for is a directory of markets as well as producers. So we have um, put that together to the best of our knowledge, but 
we're finding new people all the time. So if you know um, a restaurant or eatery that uses locally produced or grown um, products, so locally grown produce, locally raised dairy or meat, um, let us know. And there's a place on the website where you can do that. Um, same for markets or other sellers. And we, we will keep um, posting changes to that and updates to that. So again, it's eatlocalcochise.org. And then at the top of the page, there's um, producers and markets. And we'll, we'll keep adding to that. Um, I want to talk a little bit now about some of the farmers and ranchers that are that are not necessarily at the farmers markets, so they're a little less visible, um, but they're they're definitely around. And Christy raised a point in the chat about that the farmers markets, you know, there's a cost to the to the vendors to be there. So some of them, either because of their time commitments. Um, they just don't have the bandwidth to do all of our markets. And we're lucky we have a lot of markets, but um, you know, it's the producer's choices sort of how they want to distribute. And then some of our producers do all the markets and then they also have um, direct distribution. But um, the slide I have up right now um, is, is talking about those places that, are, that you may not see at the markets. Um, and the first thing I wanna talk about is CSAs. If you're not familiar, this is community supported agriculture. And the idea of this is where customers buy in to a share of what a farm produces as a member. And typically the way it works is you pay um, a lump sum up front, and it varies depending on the, the terms of the farm. And I can give you some examples of about how much it is. Um, but you, you pay up front, and so you're taking part of the risk with the farmer and giving them the capital that they need up front. And then what they supply you with typically is weekly boxes of produce for a period of time. And again, that's up to the farmer. So here in Cochise County, um, we have one farm that has four week shares. So you're buying a month worth of produce. And then we have some that are longer up to 12 weeks. And again, you, you have to check with the individual farm. But the thing that's really nice about CSAs, first of all, it's a nice way to support farms because again, you're taking the risk and you're, you're in some sense investing in the farm in a small way that's that's really helpful to them um, it also gives you a real opportunity to get to know the farmer because you'll be seeing them every week while in your membership and typically for most farms and i would definitely say this in cochise county um, their first pick produce goes into their CSA shares because those are the, the customers they've really established relationships to um, and in some cases um, that's the only way you can get produce from some of these vendors. So um, when you sign up for these shares, different farms work in different ways, but some of them will have an arrangement where you can pick up at the farm certain hours. Some of them have drop points around the county. So there might be you know, one in Elfrida, one in Sierra Vista, different places you can meet, and some of them deliver. So this is, again, an option for people who are homebound or who have a hard time getting out. Um, you might look into this. So three farms that I want to talk about um, just briefly that are offering CSAs right now. One is Arevalos Farm, and they are in Elfrida. Um, the next one is, in, is Horton Farm, and I believe they're in Hereford. Is that right, Winnie? Yes. Yes. Horton also sells at the Sierra Vista Farmers Market. I think not every week, um, but they, they do they'll sell. Be, they'll be back in May. Awesome. Okay. Good to know. And then the third is the Echoing Hope Ranch. And there are links to all of these on our website. Um, but something just a little interesting about Echoing Hope is they're a nonprofit that has a residential program for adults with autism. So they have sort of a, a an extra interesting mission and then they do farming as well and and they're having a CSA and their CSA they actually have options of different number of weeks so some um, I think Horton has too where you can either buy um, for different periods like four weeks or nine weeks or 
you could buy a half share or a full share, which might depend on just how big your family is or how much produce you eat. Um, most of these CSAs also have add-on options. So they'll have the standard box that you've paid for, but then you might have an option to buy either additional produce that they have, like maybe they have extra spinach or something that wasn't in the box, or some of them have an option to buy things like bread or dairy or eggs or something like that. So that's that's the concept of CSA. And it's it's been a really um, popular thing with farms and with customers across the nation. And I'm excited that we have some of these in Cochise County. So um, let us know if you have questions in the chat, but also check out these farms because this is the time. Spring is, you know, our gardens are starting to go and the farms are starting to go. So the CSAs are starting and the farmers markets also are, are stepping up right now. So it's a good time to be looking at this. Um, there are also some farms and ranches that sell directly either from their farm or from drop points. And this isn't ex this isn't mutually exclusive from the farmers market. So some places like Golden Rule Dairy, um, they sell at the farmers markets, they sell at retail places like Sierra Vista Co-op, and they also will sell direct from the farm or from drop points. So you know that gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, the farms that I've listed here, Coyote Song Farm sells or ranch sells uh, pork and beef. Um, L&B, which is up in Wilcox, sells pork, chicken. Um, they have goats, they do eggs, and they also do vegetables. Um, and they're, they're a newer farm. Um, they relocated, I believe, from Washington. Yeah. Um, and Wind Dancer is a farm in Portal, um, and they are doing um, produce and they're selling um, direct from their farm and they also are doing a farm stand um, at, in Portal, in front of the library actually. Um, and they may also be doing either drop points or delivery or possibly even farmer's markets as they, as they grow. Um, White Barn Hay and Cattle is another meat producer also in Portal um, and they, they supply beef and they do um, drop points around the county. So those are some um, farms that you might be, you might not know about. If you know of other farms that sell direct, those are the hardest ones for us to find out about and we really do wanna build a pretty comprehensive um, directory. So let us know if you know of others. Um, I'm going to just check in and see if there are any questions. Um, I see a question about if CX, CSA boxes can be paid by EBT or SNAP or the coins. Um, and that's really a decision up to the farmer. Um, so you would need to check with the farmer on that. I know that at least one of these was looking into that, um, but I don't know if they do it right now. One thing I would say with um, with all of these things that are up to the farmer, definitely ask the farmer because they, you know, just like any business, they want to provide what's helpful to their customers. So, you know, ask if they have local produce, ask if they take SNAP, um, ask if they would do a drop point um, if, if, or, or, if they would come to a market that you already go to, because that's gonna that's gonna drive their decision making process, and it's just always good to hear from customers who are interested. So, definitely look into that. Um, Charlene, any other questions that we've got coming in? No, I think uh, well, no, I I think um, the only outstanding one is related to the Earth Day markets. Okay, so let's talk. Um, Oh, actually, let me let me talk about one other thing, and then we'll talk more about future future events, including Earth Day celebrations around the county. Um, so the uh, the last thing that I want to mention about um, local food sources is all the people who are either growing or raising animals that that we don't know about that might be your neighbors. So ask around for your neighbors of who's selling things because there are people, and I think in Cochise County, especially eggs, there, there must be a hundred different people um, who have chickens and have eggs. And 
it's it's a it's a um, there's just a lot of them, but a lot of them don't sell at markets. They just sell to neighbors or they sell to people they know. Um, I know I have like my my treasured egg person who I who I love, who's just like not far from me. Um, but also people sometimes people have gardens and maybe they don't they're not selling like on a big scale. But those of you that have gardens know when when something's successful, like last year, I had just a flood of eggplants and they all came ripe at once and I, I couldn't I couldn't even freeze or can enough to keep them all. Um, talk to people you know and see um, what they have if they might be interested in bartering or selling or what kinds of arrangements. Um, I think we live in a rural county and that's how a lot of transactions get done and I think that's I think it's fun and kind of exciting. Um, I will just mention that on Facebook, there is a, somebody can post the link, um, maybe Robin, it's it's called Farm Fresh, I think it's called Farm Fresh in Cochise County. And it is just kind of an exchange site where people say, you know, I'm selling eggs, I'm gonna, I have plant starts and I'm gonna be next to the Elfrida post office tomorrow, um, whatever people have. And you could also put up um, requests on there. Does anybody have blah, blah, blah. Um, that's a really good place to look. I know not everybody's on Facebook. And unfortunately, a lot, for those that aren't on Facebook, a lot of these kind of smaller vendors or just even individual people, um, Facebook is a good place to connect with those. If, there's, if you're not on Facebook and there's something you're really looking for or an inquiry you want to put out there, if you email me, um, I will post it in or try to find something and, and put it up there. And I'll put my email at the end, but um, it's karen at the eatlocalcoaches.org or info at eatlocalcoaches.org and Charlene can post that also. Um, we did not talk about Angry Acres Ranch, I don't think, Robin, you wanna just mention them real quick? Yes, yes. Um, while I was at the rodeo on Saturday with um, um, a third and survey shopping society. I ran into a uh, husband and wife, Angry Acres Ranch out of Benson, and they have eggs and meat. They have alpaca wool. They have livestock sales, ranch tours, animal cameos. Um, you know, they have it all. And they have a Facebook and Instagram and a Twitter, um, all at Angry Acres Ranch. So definitely check them out. Thank you, Robin. And I see Christy and Christy, if you want to talk, I'm Charlene, you can make her a panelist. Um, but we had talked the other day about um, gleaning. And the idea of gleaning is going out and picking extra produce um, that growers might have. And sometimes it's also the second harvest. Like if somebody is machine harvesting and they have extras, sometimes it's just people who have, I, I especially around here, what I find is fruit trees. Um, I know people who will have fruit trees and everything comes ripe and they're not selling and they're just looking for somebody who can use it. Um, I don't know of a formal gleaning group around here right now, but it's definitely something that a lot of us are interested in. So I think um, if anybody knows of other people who might be interested in collaborating on this, because it'd be nice to have sort of a group of people, again, because when it happens, it tends to be, you know, an acre of something or 50 yeah. fruit trees. Are so you on, it, Kristen? Yeah, yeah I'm on and I, I unmuted myself. We we did try it. Um, as Seth knows, we lost Candace. So some of our gleaning efforts went away when she left the state. Um, Bisbee had tried to start a small group, Synergy something. Um, it was, mm. you know, various people I knew, but I'm not sure how far they got. It's, it tends to happen in about August, September. There is too much apricots, too much peaches, too much of stuff, and just would like, yeah, Candace is back on our board, um, but she's still in Washington. So kind of something when there's too much local food, and we could also be sharing that with Tucson too. They would love to have produce up at Ishkasita 
um, refugee network. Um, we, we brought down a lot of their citrus last winter. We didn't this year with the pandemic, but we supplied our food banks with a lot of excess citrus out of Tucson. So reach out to, to us at the market. Um, let's talk about it again with not only Eat Local, but um, ways just not to let it go to waste. Definitely. I, I will um, I will post something on Facebook. And it's good because we have we're in a good time period where we have a few months to sort of think more about that. But I'm glad that you raised that a lot again. So thank you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about future events. And we've talked some about Earth Day. Um, Earth Day is tomorrow, for those of you who don't know. And there's lots going on at the Sierra Vista market. And um, if, if Winnie or Christy want to share more about that, um, please do. I also know that the Bisbee Farmer's Market has Earth Day activities planned. And I don't know if um, Trudy is still with us, if she wants to share um, Palomino's. Yeah. Um, Laura is going to celebrate Earth Day. I kind of nudged her that way again, too. And so I'll still be down there again with um, information on desert harvesting, too. We just have a small startup spring harvesting guide, which will include um, choya and yucca and what we can do with those, just things that might show up in your neighborhood. We didn't have a very wet winter, so we won't have the usual spring greens. And we sort of ran out of time, but you can eat tumbleweed, for example. And then there's still crops available from the winter, actually, acorns and barrel cactus fruits. So um, we look forward to that, sharing what we have locally that's just gets thrown away or raked up, acorns go in the trash. And um, so, yeah, we'll be over there again. And then I think just having the sun oven to have an alternative food source for cooking. So we'll have those out. Winnie and I will bring ours <laughs> if it's not too windy. They're quite expensive to get fixed if they pick up and fly away. So. Thank you, Christy. So definitely everybody stop by the BASA booth at those two markets. Um, and what Christy was just talking about is foraging, which is going out and getting the wild foods that we have around here and figuring out how to eat them. We have a webinar on foraging coming up on June 2nd with Christy and others. Um, I see that choya buds are coming. And after we had Gary Nabham talk about choya buds being like asparagus, although I'm, I'm almost yeah. tired of asparagus right now. I have so much, but. Now, or, didn't he say artichoke hearts too, Karen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. celery. So yeah, I and they, they're commonly dried. So um, yeah, ours are just about to come out now. Awesome. Um, and Trudy says nothing special for Earth Day, but they're going to do something for Independence Day. So look for that. And we will post that on our Facebook page as well. Um, I also know our various libraries around the county and we have 12 libraries in Cochise County. So chances are there's one near you. Um, most of them or many of them are doing Earth Day activities. Now, our, a lot of our libraries are still on curbside, but I know Bisbee and I believe Sierra Vista have um, pick up packages for kids, grab and go kind of things for Earth Day and other activities. So um, check your local library, either website or Facebook page, or if you have specific questions about a library, you can always email me and ask me. Um, anything else for Earth Day? It may be windy tomorrow, so come see us. Um, I will be there with free microgreen seeds um, which I'll probably be clutching onto so they're not blowing away, but um, come by and see me. And I'll also have some um, some of the very many books we have um, around the libraries. And um, here's just some examples. A lot of good books that we've um, made available through this program on foraging, gardening, cooking, um, kids books, just all kinds of different things. We also have microgreen kits that you can check out from our local libraries that have everything you need to grow microgreens, dirt, seeds, containers. Um, other events we have coming up, um, two weeks from today, we have 
a webinar on cooking with fresh vegetables. And um, Elizabeth will be joining us as well as one of her colleagues. Um, we have two weeks after that, we have something on preserving, um, freezing, drying, and canning. Um, for when we do our gleaning or we have our great crop of eggplants or whatever it is, ways to preserve that food. Um, I mentioned desert foraging. Um, in, on June 16th, we have a webinar on raising local livestock, and that will be with um, Dennis Maroney from Sky Island Brand 47 Ranch and Eric Hess as well, who was on one of our previous webinars. So we're looking forward to that. And then um, in June, we will be having another big read of the book Animal Vegetable Miracle, which is a book by Barbara Kingsolver about a year of eating local. And it is a delightful read if you haven't, um, if you haven't read it. And there are copies of that um, at all of our local libraries. And we also have book club kits. So if you have a book club or you have a group who might be interested in reading that book together, um, we would be happy to um, set you up with um, a set of books that your group can use. So I think um, that's it. I put up contact information for Eat Local Cochise. Um, we are on the web as well as on Facebook and Instagram. Um, all of the farms, markets, retailers, ranches that we've mentioned um, are on that on that website and we are we are growing that all the time. And you've heard already today just a couple new things that somebody's uncovered. So um, I am really excited about the potential um, growth of local food in our county. I think we've had tremendous um, excitement as a, as a result of not just this project, but just the things that have happened in all of our worlds in the last year with COVID and lots of things going on. It's making people think about food security. And um, I, I, uh, I would encourage you to not just support our local vendors, but also um, gr try growing something of your own. And we have um, also, I will have information at the market tomorrow about seed libraries around the county. I believe we have four of them currently where you can go get seeds for free um, through, through our libraries. And we may have a new one coming online as well that we're working on. So um, any last comments from anyone before we sign off? Anything I forgot? OK, um, send us your questions. And to close, I just want to um, really extend a big thank you to our panelists today. And thank you to everybody who works in Cochise County to provide healthy, delicious local food. We appreciate it. And we know it's a lot of hard work. So thank you all. See you soon.